Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, yeah, time to do an update on September's energy, um, energy usage, energy generation, my solar update, all of those things. Uh, it's been a great month, um, a really busy month for me with the solar configuration. But uh, what a transformation. It was almost as if once August ended, September arrived and so did autumn. A hundred kilowatt hours less. So just as I predicted, instead of over 500 kilowatt hours generating from my old solar array, I only generated 400 and just scraped that 400 as well. So September weather-wise was a transformational month because it really was autumn's arrived. And uh, yeah, while I'm uh, doing this video, October has been awful. The amount of rain here that we've had in Norfolk. Um, I've had one of the days just the other day was less than one kilowatt hour generated uh, of electricity from both my solar arrays. So both my solar arrays, yeah, that's one of the updates for the month. Um, as you've probably seen from another one of my videos, if you follow my uh, channel, that uh, I have installed a second solar array. So I started with a 3.9 kilowatt P peak performing system and I've installed a second array with a solar edge inverter and eight 300 watt panels. So that's 2.4 kilowatts on top. So a total of 6.3 at peak performance, but uh, through the inverters, one's 3.6, one's two. So that's 5.6. So I should see just under 5.7 as my peak output from my solar array now on peak sunny days. And yet, have I seen that? I have, I have seen 5.6 creeping up to 5.7. So on some days, even in September with the lower sun, I have managed to see those peak values. In addition to that second array, I've also installed an eddy uh, device. That's the My Energy device, the solar diverter for diverting excess solar energy into my hot water tank. It basically connects between my manual immersion switch, which I've been switching on and off so far, and uh, it then puts you know, a timer in there and the logic to say if there's enough solar energy, then it will turn it on and ramp up the power. So a three kilowatt immersion heater that I have in my tank, it can put uh, anything from 50 watts or something as low and trivial as that all the way through to the three kilowatts. And it varies that depending on how much sun I have. Now I was apprehensive of putting a solar diverter in because um, I thought just turning it on and off manually provided enough benefit or having it on a timer would provide enough benefit. And the extra benefit, the extra kilowatt hours that you'd save of grid energy of being 100% solar for heating a hot water, I didn't think that justified. I was wrong, um, and I'll admit it. Um, one of the great benefits of having one of these solar diverters, like the Eddy device, is that you've always got hot water. So whereas before I'd turn the hot water on and heat the tank, and then gradually throughout the day and the night, it would decrease in temperature until I reheated it the next day, it's not like that. Because every time I have a shower or every time I run the hot water to do some washing up, the My Energy Eddy device is then um, automatically coming on. And if there's excess solar, it's automatically reheating the water. So we're finding that um, on good sunny days, especially, we have hot water all day and it doesn't decrease in temperature. It keeps it at that hot level. So I would say not only am I saving in the extra kilowatt hours from the grid that I'm not using anymore. I'm also saving from not having to manually switch the immersion on and off. And then finally, I'm also gaining because the hot water is hotter. It is being kept at a much hotter temperature all of the time because it's not costing me anything extra to do that. It's doing it automatically from the excess solar. So yeah, I am very happy having a solar diverter and I can really understand why so many people were saying, just do it. And that's the element that I didn't see. I didn't see that it would be heating it multiple times a day from free energy and therefore I'd have hot, hotter water all of the time. Anyway, uh, very, very happy with that. It's working really well. And uh, I'll get into the numbers in just a moment and explain them all to you and what I've seen. Some anomalies, some of the data uh, looks good. Some of the data doesn't look good. For example, um, I'm seeing differences between my two inverters or my two solar arrays. Um, I'm seeing differences between um, daily and monthly statistics on the My Energy Eddy device. Anyway, let's show you some of the data and explain it. Starting with the graph that shows generation from the solar array, the old original array generated 401.4 kilowatt hours. But if we add in the generation from the new second array that went in from September the 12th, then you can see we're back up to over 500 kilowatt hours for the month. 
Grid energy consumption down from 133 last month to only 68 units of uh, electricity this month. I think that's mostly down to having the eddy installed. I previously estimated I think I was using about 1.5, 1.75 units of um, grid energy to heat my hot water every day. So times that by 18 days it was installed. That's a good 30 kilowatt hours that you can knock off my grid energy usage. The orange line is showing my total solar generation, including my second array, again peaking just over 500 kilowatt hours this month. Green shows the amount of energy I'm putting into the car via the Zappi, and that's continually going up. And I think that's because initially in the first few months I was using free rapid chargers. Then the summer came out, which I mean I could use more solar energy for free from the Zappi. And now I've got two arrays, I can use even more. So it should start to plateau now, I think. And red, obviously, for the hot water. And uh, it was estimated before because it didn't have an actual number until now. So going forwards, it will be accurate. And uh, I've increased the amount of energy I've been using to heat the hot water because I'm heating it hotter now. Weather-wise, we had four really dull days in September. There was a fifth day that I didn't uh, record very much generation, but that was the day the solar was turned off to do the installation of the second array on the 12th of September. Peak day for the month was uh, 23.4 kilowatt hours on my original array, and that was the only day that we exceeded 20 kilowatt hours, so the only really bright sunny day for the month. Overall, both arrays we generated around 550 kilowatt hours of energy. Now we can get into some of the data differences. I've been measuring the kilowatt hours for each month based on what I can see on the app or the website for my inverter. But the value for kilowatt hours generated on the meter side looks slightly different, at least on my old inverter anyway. This month on the new array, we generated 146.3 kilowatt hours at the meter, but on the app, it shows 146.71, just 0.3 kilowatt hour difference. Looking on my old array, taking this month's reading, 3741, taking away 2803, from two months ago we get 938 kilowatt hours. But if we compare that to what's visible on the app for that inverter, that's 955 kilowatt hours, a difference of 17 kilowatt hours between the actual meter generation amount and what the inverter says. The inverter looks very optimistic. One of the things I've wanted to look at this month is the performance of the second array. I want to see whether it's working according to specification or whether it's working better or worse compared to the first array. So on the day of installation, I took a meter reading on both, 0.99 for the new array, 3508 for the second array. Then using the meter readings for the old array at 3741 and 146 on the new array, for this period, we get 233 kilowatt hours on the old array and 145 kilowatt hours on the new array. The second array is therefore generating 62.23% of the old array. And if you look at the specification of 3.9 kilowatt versus 2.4, it should be 61.55%. So we're generating slightly more than specification initially. Over the last few days, we've only been generating 58.7% of the old array. So what's changed? And it's shading. Shading from the scaffolding poles that were left up for a good week to two weeks after the solar installation was completed. And that shading has made a huge, huge difference. On this image that comes from the Solar Edge app, I can see that one of the strings of panels, because I've got four strings installed, is down by about 10% only one string. The two kilowatt solar edge inverter that I've had installed comes with an optimizer which has four connections. So two panels per connection, that's a maximum of eight panels that can be optimized in pairs. This shading seen here with these scaffolding poles only affected two of the panels output on my new configuration, the top panels on this array. The bottom 14 panels were all affected. So the lower output of the right hand two that you can see with the shading, that lower performance was applied to all of them. So I saw a lot less performance coming from my old original array. And that's why I had a difference in the percentages. With the scaffolding gone, there's now no shade on any of the panels. So we have a like for like comparison, the top eight panels on the new SolarEdge, the bottom 14 panels on the Solus inverter. 
And as I said, we're currently seeing 58% comparison between the two arrays, where specification-wise it should be 61%. The Solar Edge Inverter doesn't seem to perform as well like-for-like like in lower light conditions on duller days. Okay, moving on now to the Eddy. On a daily basis, I've been collecting the daily figure for how many kilowatt hours I've been using to heat the hot water and putting that in a spreadsheet. And on average, you can see here 4.249, 4.25, let's call it, kilowatt hours per day to heat my hot water. The Eddy device itself says we've used 75 kilowatt hours so far this month. But if I total the spreadsheet numbers that I'm in keeping, it comes to 89 kilowatt hours. So I can't be sure which is actually correct, but I have added a second column here showing the integer value, so removing the decimal places from that daily value, and that only comes to 78 kilowatt hours, quite close to the 75. Definitely seems to be an issue here with the My Energy Eddy numbers. And lastly, that green line on the chart. How many kilowatt hours have I used to charge my Kona Electric this month? 210.93 according to the Zappi. And that's for 968 miles. And at 13 pence per kilowatt hour that I'm currently paying, that's £1.15 for 968 miles. So out of the 210.93, only 8.82 units of electricity from the grid was used. That's worth repeating. With the solar panels that I've got and charging from solar, I've spent only £1.15 on electricity to charge my Kona Electric and drive 968 miles. If I take those 968 miles and divide by the 210.93 kilowatt hours, that's 4.59 miles per kilowatt hour that I've achieved. And yet the Kona says on average over the last few months, I've been getting 5.2 miles per kilowatt hour. So that must be about a 12% loss during charging. And just one final observation. You can see here from the chart from the My Energy app that I've got about the first week and a bit of data missing, so I can't tell exactly what my energy consumption was. That missing data starts from the day I installed the Eddy, so I've got consistent data from that point. But before that, I don't have any solar information, I don't have any consumption information that's gone missing. Despite calling My Energy, they haven't been able to get it back for me yet. Lo and behold, though, the Zappy data is still available for that period. So isn't that weird? And according to this screenshot here, uh, I am consuming 74% of the energy that I'm generating from the solar panels. I'm only exporting 26% to the grid. Now, yes, that is quite a lot, 93 kilowatt hours to go back out to the grid, but the consumed generation, the 261.8, is more than I've consumed before. So I'm generating more and I'm consuming more. So I'm very, very happy. As always, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. There's quite a lot of data in there. And uh, for me, my solar system is it's just improving now. And I, I feel much better with this solution of 6.3 kilowatts that it seems to balance better. In the summer, I'm probably gonna have a massive excess on really peak summer days. I'm probably gonna have far more than I need, but that's a good thing because when I eventually have a battery, um, then that excess can go to the battery and that can reduce my grid usage even more. But equally, I may have other things. I may have other ways of heating the house or air conditioning units. So in the summer, I think long term, I'll get to use that extra excess that I'm generating now. Adding more solar panels, yeah, it's basically going to mean I'm going to be able to survive on just solar energy for many more months than I would be able to with the old system. The old system just did the job. Um, it charged the car and it heated the hot water, but it, it did feel just about enough. Now with 6.3 kilowatts, I've definitely got enough. Um, it is doing really well. The only times that it struggles is on days where I'm not generating any solar at all. So, so long as I'm generating, I don't know, four, five, six kilowatt hours a day, that's enough to heat my hot water. Um, and if I can't charge the car on that day, then the car's got enough charge in it that, uh, because you know 64 kilowatt hours in the Kona, then I can go a couple of days without charging it and I haven't got to worry. So. I feel quite comfortable now with my configuration. It does seem to suit my lifestyle more and the way we live and the way I want to live, which is using just solar energy as much as I can. As for the battery, will I go for a battery? At some point, yes, I think I've said before I will, but I'll recognize that it doesn't cost justify 
It's just a thing to satisfy my desire for being as off-grid as possible and for optimising the data and the solar energy as much as possible. So that's when I think I'll get it. Uh, which one? Do you know, I just think the price point's not quite right yet. So I'm going to be looking for um, a better software solution and a better solution for the right number of kilowatt hours for the price. So yes, I'm, I'm monitoring the market and waiting for the right solution at the right price. Anyway, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing these videos. Really hope you enjoyed it and uh, more videos to come soon. Thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye.